This my story, man. Listen. Hey, I remember growing up, having nothing to eat, and times was no different. On Christmas Eve, mama told me eat all you can in school for the week, because she ain't get paid till the following week. I remember growing up, rebelling, typical youngster, moving from house to house, couldn't stay up out of trouble. Mama was scared, cause they said it was gonna shoot me, so I kept a 3-8 up under the hoodie. Lord, I wanna thank you, cause I'm still alive. I remember when they jumped me, they could've took my life, a whole hood. But it was just me and a few guys My little sister was present, she took a hit to the eye I remember getting high for the very first time I was young, I was dumb, I couldn't see, I was blind Remember my fam got a call for the homie Pulled up blood everywhere, they hit him with like 40 And Lord, I'm still here It was your mercy And now I see clear And I give you glory It's my testimony you brought me through if it wasn't for you i'll be dead ain't that the truth this my testimony of what you brought me through if it wasn't for you i'll be dead ain't that the truth hey guns and liquor ambition and getting money trying to ball and get rich off of dirty money seen the ballers they was cooling with the honeys get rich or die try and had a mount up to something that's what they told me To get respect, you gotta earn it from the OGs I see many going under Six deep, but I'm trying to go yonder High school dropout thugging was my mentality Motivated by the streets and this evil principalities And yeah, I could have been a casualty But it was his blood that covered me Now I'm singing holy Your hand was on me since I was a baby Kept me safe when I could have OD you was there when they could have smoked It's my testimony Of what you brought me through If it wasn't for you I'll be dead, ain't that the truth This my testimony Of what you brought me through If it wasn't for you I'll be dead, ain't that the truth My name is Isaac uh, Pedroza. Please call me Sticks from Lomas. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a next gang member. But I ride for Jesus now, man. That's, that's, that's my purpose. That's uh, where's Lomas at? Uh, Lomas is located in the city of... Uh, well, it's actually three cities. Okay. Rosemi, South San Gabriel, Monterey Park, and even like a little piece of Montevallo, like the town center. That's, that's my neighbor, too. What that's, part, that's of, what part of LA do you guys uh, claim? Well, technically, it's in the San Gabriel Valley, but my generation, we didn't claim the valley like that. We just, because we're from South San Gabriel, that's what we say, Loma, South San Gabriel. Now, later on, they started kind of, some homies claim SGV, but technically, um, we just, you know, we're just Loma. How about, how about your older homies? My older homies say, that's where I got it from. My older homies were like, we ain't from, from San Gabriel Valley, we're from Loma, we're from South San Gabriel. That's, that was, that's basically where, I, where it was instilled in me. Because we're like in the middle of uh, the surrounding cities is uh, Pico Rivera, East LA on the other side of Monterey Park. Right. 
Alhambra, uh, San Gabriel, and then El Monte in the San Gabriel Valley side. So we're like right there on the borderline, and, and um, we just never really claimed. Well, let, let's say if you, were, if you were in the joint today, what would you be claiming? What, uh, what side of town? Even in, even in the joint, um, me personally, uh, like I said, technically, you know, uh, I follow up under the SGV umbrella, but, right. but uh, I never, I was, I, was, I was universal, man. I was all over, man. That's right, I, I, was, I, I, wasn't, I didn't really play that. But like I said, I mean, I was good with, 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 with a lot of the homies. But, you know, technically, I mean, we, we had a lot of enemies. So I, I used to be, me and, my, me and my older homie, I remember we used to, uh, we say, most of those dudes are our enemies, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, you know. <laughs> we can't claim the wire because yeah, most of know, the wire but, is our enemies. Yeah, but, but um, you know, uh, uh, that, that was just instilled in me, yeah. you know, from, from a young age. Like right. I said, the later generation, little by little. And and I, I don't got nothing, you know. I love where you know where, where I'm from, where I grew up. Yeah, of course. It was just younger days, and it was different, yeah. different time. You know, and I had a different that, mindset, brother. That, exactly. Different mindset. Different so mindset, yeah. so let's get back to the to the basics, man. Uh, where'd you grow up at? Where were you born, first of all? Well, I was born in a General Hospital in I don't know if that's Boyle Heights, yeah. East LA, Lincoln Heights, Lincoln Heights. Lincoln Heights. Yeah, yeah, Lincoln Heights. You're right. I was born there, uh, November twenty seventh, nineteen seventy eight, and uh, I was raised. Right off of uh, Cincinnati by Brooklyn and Soto. Yeah. The next street on Bro- uh, I, I still call it Brooklyn. Cesar Chavez. 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 Um, right in between Evergreen and Fickett. And uh, I lived there till I was around seven. And uh, as I mentioned before in other, other interviews, uh, my mom, she moved us out of there because me and my brother were already, you know what I mean, troublemakers. And she wanted to get us out of the gang uh, like, uh, uh, environment, right. you know what I mean, and um, she moved. She moved us to uh, Monterey Park, and uh, we're in Monterey Park for probably about a year and a half. And what, then, how, how old were you when you moved to Monterey Park? I was Park? around seven. And your brother? My my brother was ten. Okay, his older. We're brother. three years apart. Yeah, okay. and uh, and then uh, uh, it was right there on Garvey, right by Atlantic, Atlantic and Garvey. Right. Actually, closer to Garfield, and then uh, about a year and a half later, we moved to. Uh, San Gabriel Boulevard in Garvey, man, in, in the city of Rosemead. Right. And I grew up in a place called a uh, Paradise Trailer Park. I think you 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 uh you actually went out there and checked it out, man. And, and yeah, that place is uh that place seems like you can do a whole uh, segment on that place alone, man. That place yeah. is hood, man. Woo! I, 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 I I could not believe how that place looks in 2019 because you're driving around there and it's a Great looking city, yeah. and as soon as you pull up to that place, you're in a third world country, yeah. brother. It's the same. It's just, it looks the same, man. A little couple upgrades, but oh, if those same. are upgrades, brother, I don't. Yeah. Know. <laughs> I, I can only imagine how I look back right? in the days, brother. Yeah. Okay, so so you move in there to the trailer parks. How old are you when you moved in there? Uh, so that had to be a year, maybe about a year and a half later, eight and a half, nine. Okay, nine years old. So, so you're about nine years old. So where do you start meeting your homies? Walk me right when that. I got there, bro. Right when I got there, uh, uh, there's a, a significant individual. Um, actually, I, I I can mention his name. Um, you know, I, I, I always have love for him, man. He he's a guy that that um, that I believe God used. Cause I, you know, once again, I, I believe that that my whole life right. is is a uh, it was all planned. You know, right. it was all it was all pre predestined and and this individual, uh, his name's uh, Juan uh, Blinky, my homeboy Blinky. Right. He was already hanging out with the homies, and I used to hang around with him, and that's how, at a young age, man, already around that age, nine, nine, nine. nine how old was Blinky? Nine, he was my brother's age. Okay, so, so he's about three years older. Yeah, three years older, and uh, and that's how I, I gravitated to the hood. I gravitated towards the hood, and and uh, that's where it all started. Okay, man. so you, so you're nine years old. Uh, walk me through the initiation phase of uh, your neighborhood. So, I didn't get jumped in till I was, I believe, it was on my birthday. I believe it was 1990. And that was maybe about, let me see, I'm trying to get the, the math right. So, uh, a little bit about 13 80, years old. 80, uh, yeah, it was around 90, November 27th. But, but um, so I backed up the hood for about three, four years, right. somewhere around there. Then I, I finally got into the hood. Um, yeah, because usually when you're about like nine years old, I think Boo Boo was from his neighborhood. That you're, you're kind of just still a little kid. You can still claim you can yeah. throw the gang signs, but people are gonna roll up on you and be like, "That's a little kid." 
Yeah, but once exactly. you turn, that's how I was, bro. That's how I was. The homies they didn't even want to take me places. Yeah, like back then, I I, I have a memory of. There was a big member they used to have the Cinco de Mayo things in uh, Lincoln Park, I believe. Yeah, Lincoln Heights Park. Lincoln Park, and it used to be active, bro. And I, I still remember I was, I was, uh, we're all meeting up, um, you know, and and they're like, he can't go, man. I was so small. Right. I was, I was like that little kid, like, ah, oh, what do you mean, you know, like I can't go. And sure enough, man, like someone, someone got killed, like I think um, that day. You know, and and but they were looking out for me. Now, now yeah, I understand. Of course, like, of I would have done the same thing. You know, right? But uh, yeah, bro, it, it was it was a different time, man. Different era back then, and and uh, it was it was it was an experience, man. That that I'm, I'm glad that I went through all that because it instilled things in me, man. That couldn't get nowhere else. Right. Man. So so now you're 13. You're at the park. What happens? They ask you to join. You tell them you want to get in. How did that all I work out? I think I was around. 12. What's actually. the name of the park again? Uh, Garvey Park. Garvey Park. I went there Garvey also, Park, yeah. man. I, I, uh, I met up. Actually, me and, and some dude that he's, he's, he became, that same day, he got jumped into an enemy's neighborhood right down the street from us. I won't mention the, the neighborhood, right. but uh, it's a little street. Um, it was my birthday. We were planning on, you know, we we're going to go and, and, and uh, kick it, whatever. And, and, um, and he couldn't make it. He couldn't make it, so I went alone, and uh, you know we're kicking at the park, and and I wasn't from the hood yet. There was actually three of us that weren't from the hood, and and I, my homeboy's like, "What's up, man? You, you guys ready or what?" And that was it, man. There was no turning back. My homeboy, uh, buzzard, rest in peace. They jumped him in, and then he helped, and another homie jumped the other homie in, and then they them two went, uh, and another homie jumped right. in. And uh, yeah, I was right there. Uh, I think you went uh, you went over there in that little hill. Yeah, yeah, I took I took pictures yeah. of it exactly. Let Let's talk about that other that other cat that you said ended up joining a rival neighborhood. You guys were friends at the time. We were we were road dogs, man. Explain to people. A lot of people don't understand that sometimes they uh they, they don't understand how quick you can just get into a neighborhood and then boom, you got an enemy. Yeah, bro, it was a trip because this guy, where he grew up, um, we all grew up together, man. We we're all like. Is one city, but there was this little street that they were rivals. Where he grew up, it was like a duplex, and his neighbors they were all from this little neighborhood. Right. And he grew up with them, but he was he was um he he had got into it with them or something. He was backing up my neighborhood, okay. And we used to go to school together. Like I used to, he used to wait for me. Uh, on the main street, I used to jump on on the pegs, you know what I mean? Right. And we'll drive to school. You guys were boys. Yeah, we were boys. And um, what happened with him, they for, they basically forced him in the hood. Right. They ended up, uh, he was jumping the fence somewhere behind where he lived, and they jumped him. And they told him, you're from, you're from the neighborhood now. Right. And he just accepted it. He was like, he just went with it. From that day forward, he became my enemy, man. And, and wow. the way that works... Is is, um, you can be boys, you can be even family, um, but once the neighborhood comes in, especially back then, right? That that's just who you are, man. It doesn't matter. All that pretty much goes out the window. There's some instances where, yeah, you might run into each other because you were boys. You may not do nothing to each other, but if there's homies around it's, and you guys are enemies, that that's all out the window, man. You know what I mean? It, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be on and cracking, man. Have you ever ran into that guy now that's been 20, 30 years? You know what? I ran into him one time, bro, and I was working. Uh, I used to actually drive, drive a, a bus, bro, out there in in, uh, in LA. Right. And I was driving, bro, and I seen him in West Covina, and that was the first time, bro. And I was like, and I was still in and out. I right. was, I was still active, but I was trying to do good, and it was like. My inst- I was like, man, because he was one of them, you know what I mean? Like, you know, got to get him, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> but, but I'm, you know, I, I couldn't do nothing. And, and he didn't see me, man. He didn't see me. And I actually stopped and I thought about it. Like, man. What, I, what would you say to him now if you saw him? Oh, man. If I was say, saying, if I see him now, I'd probably preach to him, bro. You know that's what I mean? Right. You that, that's right. Bo- you guys would be boys again, probably. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't look at people like that. And I actually looked at it, uh, look at all that as, as an opportunity. To uh, 
to share the gospel with with with, with people. I mean, enemies, home homies, whatever. But um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh I wouldn't I wouldn't look at them. Um, I'd look at them a whole lot different. I'd actually be I'd actually love to run into them. Right. You know. So so now let's get back on track. Um, you're 13 years old. You're in the neighborhood now. This is early 90s. Talk to me how you progress from being a little wannabe kid, which we all are at one point, yeah. you know. You just a, called me a wannabe? No. <laughs> <laughs> to, to being a 13-year-old gang yeah. member. And, you know, you see how you get harder and harder. So yeah. talk to me in the phase now when you're like uh, 16 years old, where you at? Oh, well, a lot happened in between. You kind of skipped the whole part. But, so talk to me. But uh, once that happens, man, I mean, once once I, I got in, it's it's... You know how it is, man. It's it's active, man. You're in the hood. You're 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 doing your thing. Um, start going to jail. Start going to juvenile hall. As you start going to juvenile hall, you get hardened more and more hardened, hardened. You get you get more mature in the things of 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 the gang life, gang culture. Um, you start gaining more respect, you know. And as that happens, you start feeling more power. Right. Um. You you. You know, uh, there, there's, there's, there's only certain things we can explain of course. Like, with words, but you really can't explain it all. It's just you, you progress in that, in that life, man, and, and uh, you, you become, um, you, you, you become a product of, 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 your you know, environment. like they say, your environment, yeah, much. and, and, um, and your hood, and your hood actually that, that becomes your, your identity, man. Right. Your, your identity. You no longer represent like your name. You actually represent a hood, and that. Right there in itself, it brings a lot of pride, um, a lot of, uh, uh, you start to feel power, man. You start you, to feel power. You, you think you got power. You think you got power. I mean, you kind of do because you're, you're, what I mean by that is, is you start messing around with, with guns and you start doing all that. And when you start, you know, uh, uh, actively participating in that right. kind of stuff. You do gain the power because you got the power to oh, no, and, yeah, and, that and, kind, and, yes. and do some damage. That's what I mean, and, right. and you get addicted to that. You know, a lot of people don't understand that aspect of it is that it's, it's actually an addiction, and you feed off of that, you thrive off of that more and more and more. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? a lot of people don't understand that, uh, that gang-banging addiction, I think, is yeah, what it it's, is. Yeah, it's an addiction, man. It's, it's, and for some, some people think that everybody's, there's, you got gang members, and then you got yeah. gang bangers. Yes. And, and the gang bangers are the ones that are, really doing what you're supposed to be doing really in 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 the hood because you know that mentality is you know you're 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 what has he done for the neighborhood that's you know what i mean what has he done and you want to do you want to participate it's like in a team man baseball team everybody you know what i mean every player wants to participate uh they want to they they, they want to um contribute to winning the game. Right. And it's the same thing in, in a neighborhood, man. Is, is The biggest thing I can refer to when I, when I think about gang member, gang bangers, it's kind of like the Navy and the Marines. You're mm -hmm. both from the same thing, but I, I, a lot of times people always think that everybody's a gang banger. And the gang bangers are actually a very uh, few. Yeah, very, it's, a, it's a very small handful. Um, I mean, it depends too. Like, there was a certain era in my neighborhood right. where the majority, you know, you couldn't even be from the hood. Like, you, you, you need to be... You know, a real, a, you know. You got to be with it. Yeah, you got to be with it, man. And and, and um, it's not something that it, I'm here to glorify. You know, I want to make that very clear. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> but, no, but uh, it's, the, it's the reality of it, brother, especially yeah, back you know, then. Uh, and, and, and it's the reason I'm talking about it is because things have changed a lot. Right. Things have changed a lot. It still exists. But it's, it's uh, that, that, that's part of it, man, is, is that people should understand, um, that these certain elements, because, like I said, you got you got um, gang members. Some people are just in it for for uh, uh, the fame. They're in it for the party, for the women, for the girls, for the money, wh whatever it may be. And they're not really. It's really not in them, man. I mean, I mean, I, I believe it can be developed in people because it was developed in all of us. Of course, you know, we weren't born to be. You know what I mean? Writers and all that. But 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 at the same time, um, some of them, some some dudes. What I'm trying to get at is some dudes, they get in it for the wrong reasons, and then they end up in the situation. They end up in the in the interrogation room. They end up in a place 
that they never seen themselves in. And then, what happens? They, they, they end up, they end up folding. They end up putting people on death row. You know what I mean? They end up doing something uh, that that's actually the main thing. The, the it's the main thing that's that's that that we're held uh, uh, accountable for. Is is that's the main thing you want to do, man? Is is so what I'm trying to get at is is it's important for people to know that kids, people out there. It might seem fun, man. It might seem fun, but it's not, man. It's not because you don't. We all end up in these situations. I'm here, you know. You're here. We're all here because we we kind of made it. Like we're we're one of the some of the few, man. That 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 made it. Most of our homies, man. A lot of homies are dead or they're gone, and, and nobody plans to die, man. Nobody plans to die. You can be out there for the wrong reasons. You're at the store getting some beer. Boom! Somebody Lights somebody out. blows your head off. And that's it, man. Father in your life? Uh, no, there was, there was no father. Um, I had a kind of like a father figure, um, a guy that I used to actually call him dad when I was like four or five years old, uh, a yeah. guy that my mom was with. Um, he instilled some things in me, but, but for the most part, he wasn't really around like that. My real father, um, he pretty much left my mom, I think, when I was, I don't know, three, four months old. I, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, I, I only recently met him. Okay. He, he has a place out there, a, a number place out there in East LA, I think on third street or somewhere. Right. And I popped up on him when I got out and, uh, he didn't even know it was me, man. When I just went and I, I met him, he really didn't want his, his side of the family. They don't even know about me. I, I wanted to kind of, you know, get to know him and all that, but he preferred to leave it as it is because, um, uh, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, um, he didn't want them to know about me. He wanted to keep it a secret base. Exactly. But I'm, 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 I'm thinking now that I have a son, I'm going to go pop up on, on him again and let him know that he, he owes some, uh, child support. No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go take my, you know, take him his grandson, man. At least take a picture. And, right. Yeah. How, how about your mom? What, uh, what kind of mother do you think and your mom was when you were younger? I had the best mom. Still do. She's still here. You know, thank God. She's 81 years old, man. She okay. just turned 81. Um, and uh, she was the best mom, man. All, all the homies in the hood, they were like, man, you got a cool mom. She used to, she was one of the moms. She cooked for all the homies. Be like 10 dudes in the living room, man. And she'll cover us all in the night, you know, when we're sleeping. Right. Uh, but she was a, a working mom. She worked, she worked in a convalescent homes all, all her life. Um, and she worked nights a lot. So while she was out there working, we were in the we were home party. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So uh, it wasn't her fault, man. She tried it. She tried her her best, right. but you know, you, yeah, you, she, just, you, she just trying to put a rope over her head. Yeah, build, man. exactly. And unfortunately, just didn't have time to sit there and yeah. And, and even if she did, man, even yeah. if she did You're at that age, it, that was it, man. Yeah. Like she tried, man. Like she tried. You know, first time she see my tattoo, I, I got a, a the neighborhood on my stomach. Right. And back then I was small, There's, and it's, it was like right. big white buster, and she was like, Ugh. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about your neighborhood, man. Uh, when did you guys uh, start? My neighborhood, well, it all depends. The actual name, Lomas, um, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. The exact, there's different, different uh, I guess, opinions right. uh, that I know of. Uh, early early seventies, maybe late sixties, early seventies, right. seventy one. But my neighborhood existed, I believe, before that under different names. That's what I've heard. Um, but it actually took on the, with the name Lomas officially, I believe. Uh, one of my homeboys that I reached out to that I trust his his uh, uh his info is um uh, around seventy one, seventy one right. around there, officially with the name. But like I said. I think it was around since way earlier and under what, different. What part of uh, what part of uh, SGV was it when they really started? The well, the heart of the hood is in South San Gabriel, which is known as the Hills. Right. Which I'm sure you're familiar with is, you know, the, the, is that where the stairs are at the 88 the, steps. The 88 steps so exactly. That's, that's where your neighborhood pretty much. Yeah, the, that's the heart right? of the hood. That's oh. the heart. I mean, it stretched all the way out into right. Rosemead and all that, but the heart of the hood. Is right there in South San Diego. Did, uh, did you have you ever discussed with any of your older homies why they started your neighborhood or how it really got going? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, I, I have. Uh, just like pretty much any other neighborhood, man. You, you got back then they used to have clubs and right. stuff like that, and, and then you got clubs from the other city. Was it car the, clubs or yeah, uh, uh, yeah, either car clubs or or just little, you know, little crews. Right. They wear the jackets and all right. that, and and you know, and then you got the other clubs and, and the other side of the freeway stuff like that, and and uh, um, you end up fighting and, and then before you know it boom it ends up being being a hood man and here we are now do, do you think that all those old clubs whether it's your neighborhood other neighborhood that that have become rivals do you think they foresaw and seen that this was going to become what it came all these relators all these murders all these killings do you ever think nah. they ever thought it was going to be that serious no nah, man I, I think back then it was a lot more innocent yeah there was stuff going on but it was just it was just a, a camaraderie type of thing. But, I mean, if you take it back thousands of years, man, there's always been, you know, tribes and, and people right. warring and, and, and fighting each other. But, um, no, nah, I, I don't think they looked at it. The, I, in, in, in fact, I believe if they did foresee that, they wouldn't want that. Like, right. you know what I mean? Little young 14-year-olds driving around with AKs and, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, they they would they would uh, uh, approve of that or or maybe it would have developed differently, um, but that's at the same time. Sorry to throw. I think it was the same thing like we were talking. They didn't, didn't know as well what it was. They were also misguided. And they were still trying to figure out what was going on over here. Yeah, it's kind of like like uh, uh, kind of like the like the blacks, man. Remember back then, like they had the Black Panthers. Right. They got all these old uh, clubs. Same thing. Right. And it was more to like for kind of like protection. For the you know, for the people, and, and then it, it, it evolved, man. Then you start bringing guns into the hood. Drugs. You start bringing drugs. And I believe, you know, I'm not really a conspiracy theorist. I used to be more of a conspiracy theorist, but it's not a conspiracy, man. Drugs, guns, and all that, they, they, were, they, were, they were purposely f flooded into the streets, man, to, to, to uh, create crime, to create poverty, to create business, man. Yeah, it, it was just, uh, of course, the minorities. They, they really exactly. did shit. They, they let it happen. Yeah. Uh, and I think once it started spreading out of the minority cities, that's when they said, whoa, whoa, we need to Yeah, this yeah. They, that, they, that was it, man. They created a monster. Yeah, and, and still to this day, man, it's still, still, still affecting the communities. I understand that you're Christian. Is there any neighborhood out there that you still hold animosity towards? No. I mean, I think I'm pretty much free of that there i'm sure if if i seen like one of my main rivals uh from back then who knows man like maybe some of that old stuff would serve especially certain individuals that it, you know maybe we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to uh, uh uh get each other back then right but i think i've i've been walking with the lord enough now we're we're uh you know i i can i can you know, I can overcome that and, and, and like I said earlier, use it as, as an opportunity to uh, share my testimony, man, and, and share what God has done in my life and, uh, you know, just, just maybe even, you know, uh, create some type of peace between us. And think I've lost many, many homies. I'm, well, actually, back when I was young, when I was a youngster, when, I, when we lost my homeboy Chico and Andy, that was my first homie that I actually really lost that were my first friends that I and I was young that one hit me hard but my homeboy Triste uh Fernando uh rest in peace he he you know we're 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 good friends man and and uh and just when 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 he died and how it happened like he got killed in the shower he was in the shower when, when they killed him and just that one really uh hit us man me and 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 a lot of my my homeboys uh it it it, it like something changed, man. Something just it, it was it, it hit us pretty hard. Um, there's there's a lot of bad is bad it, moments. It, you know, you start losing so many homies. I mean, not to say it doesn't you don't feel it uh, the same, but it's never the same like you said as that first time because the first time, especially like when you're young, it's like you never felt that feeling before. You might have had someone from your family pet, but like someone you start thinking like, man, that could have been me. And, and 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 it just it, it just hits home in a whole different way as like you said you start you start because they're the same age group yeah same age group and you kind of start getting numb to that it becomes like a normal thing man the next homies so so let me ask you a little bit more about your neighborhood uh, 
When you got in, what clique uh, were you from? You guys had different cliques? Actually, we don't have no cliques, bro. Cliques, no, nah, there used to be cliques. Okay. There used to be cliques, and they stopped it. Um, I'm not sure why, maybe, because there was a lot of... Yeah, thing. maybe. And we're actually one of the only hoods that I know. There's not too many hoods that don't have cliques. Yeah. And no girls. We don't have no girls and no cliques. The only girls that we have are, like, from back in the day, and those are... I consider them homegirls. Of course. Some of them are, like, you know, they're, they're like, uh, how could I say... Uh, they're more like homeboys than homegirls. Yeah, yeah. If, if you catch my drift, you know what I mean. But but uh, uh, but no, there came a time where they where where the homies said, "That's it, man. No yeah. no, no women, no no girls, no around, clicks, no no do girls." You know around what year that was when that happened? That might have been uh, might have been I I, I don't time? know. Yeah, it was before my time. Before early early eighties maybe. When, you were in, when was... I got in, there was no girls, nah. No girls, no, no clicks, no clicks, no clicks nah. Normal. We actually um. There was a like in 2003, a very crucial time in my in my uh, 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 time where we kind of had our we kind of started our own little like a little four man clique. Right. Uh, but but uh, technically, nah, we, we don't we don't got no cliques. It was just like our little our little crew that we had. When when you were when you were in your neighborhood, let's say since you were around like um, eight nine years old nine years old. Uh, would you kick it up in that hill part, the 88 steps? Is that where you used to kick it at too? Yeah, that was that was one of you know that was one of our main spots, man. A lot of memories up there. How 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 active was that place? Because I can imagine you homies just yeah. kicking up there and exactly the way you imagine it, bro. Just homies up and down, you know, everybody drinking, girls. Did, did some of your homies live in those houses out there? Yeah, actually, my my uh, my homeboy Menace lived down there, and uh, uh, you guys might know him. He was a, a rapper. Um, okay, I know what you're about. Yeah, my good homie, man. Uh, he lived. He actually lived at the bottom of the steps, in the first house, man, down there. So that made it even more. That was like a, our little spot. You know, now, now that we went out there, me and Sonny, and took all kind of pictures on your neighborhood, I could definitely imagine you guys kicking. I see some of the older pictures that your your water has. Is you guys, you know, you guys are old school, man. Mm -hmm. But now what tripped me out more, but it also confirmed me how gentrified that area is becoming, man. You guys oh, yeah. have our homes down there. It's, I mean, that, but that's the same story. Just about everywhere, yeah, city, everywhere. City, Especially, I think in my neighborhood, it started happening before you even looked at that, like gentrification. It was happening because there's a lot of uh, Asians. I don't know if you noticed, but yeah. there's that's like a Asian uh, hub right there. Monterey Park, especially, but they started right. migrating more. Rosemead. I grew up with nothing but Mexicans and Asians, man. There was no blacks, hardly no whites. There was a few whites, uh, but it was predominantly Mexican and Asian and uh uh, uh, they started just like I said, my, buying up all the businesses. Yeah, well, we're busy fighting each other for a block we don't own. Yeah, we're buying the houses. Yeah, we're exactly. The businesses and taking over little by little. Yeah, and that was actually one of our uh, uh, our main enemies too. Is uh, uh, the Asian boys that that came out from there. there. There was a there's actually a lot of gangs, Asian gangs where I grew up. Yeah. But they weren't. That wasn't their hood. They grew up there. Right. But they didn't consider that because. They weren't like territorial. The only ones that try to claim like, like that was their neighborhood was Asian boy. That's that's why we went at it with them. But there was a lot of other Asian gangs, like they, Black most, Dragons. Most watch. Of the Asian gangs would go at it with each other. Yeah, they'd go at it with each other, and they weren't about territory. Like they know, like that was our our neighborhood. You right. can't just post up right here, like you know. That's another thing I think people don't understand is in the nineties, eighties, seventies. I think it started dying like. Early 2000s, man, like how homies would post up in blocks, man. I oh, mean. yeah, well, the, the the law, I mean, that that had a lot to do with it, but also, um, you know, people dying, man. You can't just, you know, you're, you're an open target. You're an open target. Uh, back then, it was more pride, too. Like, there's the hood. We're right here. You know what I mean? And you got homies ready. You know what I mean? You got your little spots and... and uh, uh, you're just, you know, you're ready. You're ready for, for whatever, man. How has drugs affected your neighborhood, whether it's positive or negative? Negative, bro. There's nothing positive about about that, man. Uh, drugs have, have uh, devastated uh, a lot of lives, man. Families, especially when the mess started coming around. But even back then, man, the, the crack, you know what I mean? The, that was, there was times... I remember the we call it the the booyah days, man. Smoking that's what we call it in my neighborhood, booyah, smoking booyah. Uh I was I was smoking that. It was like now it wasn't like smoking crack, like oh he's a crackhead. It was like it was 
it was a thing to do. And the whole hood would be like in the bleachers. I remember in a, uh, one of our elementary schools, everybody, man, everybody just puffing away, man. We used to go to downtown LA, get the four for 20, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, yeah, man, it was, it was vicious. But you know, the, the, the heroin, <laughs> the heroin is, 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 that's a cold drug, man. Um, that goes way back. Right. But then the meth, the meth, it, it, it really, that's when it really messed people's minds up, man. It messes up your mind, it messes you up in ways that, that all drugs are bad, man, but the meth, it does something to you, man. Like, you know, it's quick, quick man, and, and it, it just turns, in, turns you into something that you never thought you could be, man. It's a zombie, homeboy. Yeah, a zombie, and it, you start tripping, you start, you know what I mean? I had a lot of episodes where I was tripping like that, you man. You know, we're on the subject of that. Explain to people, because nowadays, it's like uh, these younger homies have lost shame. I remember back in the days, you know, we're about the same age. You would have maybe a Otecato, 35 years old, living on the street, this and that, or maybe one homie that's kind of on his bicycle. Back then, homies would have cars, would work, this and that, you get high on the weekends. But nowadays, it seems like there's no shame, man. Nowadays, everybody can smoke, everybody can be homeless, and it's, it's like a different, I don't know where the value of, I don't well, know, was real good morals. Well, we, 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 my neighborhood, we were strict sometimes on certain things. Like back then, if you were a youngster, you couldn't be doing heroin, man. Like that was that was you're you're gonna get you're gonna get touched up if if you're messing with that stuff. Now it's a little more uh, lenient. There's 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 really nothing like that. And then yeah, there was there might have been a little little time where um, even after the Booyah days later on, uh, I would I even fall up under that umbrella where. Me and my certain homies, we we still be doing our little. We you know we'd be doing our thing, yeah, but late at night, you know what I mean. We're 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 doing the the buoy thing, and 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 um, that was certain homies start looking down up, upon that. You know what I mean. I remember my my old boys uh, they used to slit. They were the homies that you know what I mean. They had everything, man. They were the ones that had all the strap, had all, and they used to look down on us. But then they were you know what I mean. They were smoking p dogs and. You know, like you ain't doing it. You're doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, What's it's the your difference? Homies, but it's almost like a father telling his son, "You can't do that." Well, you're already yeah, right. This. Like, what the yeah. Yeah. So you know, we had that little, um, and then there might have been a little, a little era where, where you know, the, the scante was looked down on and all that. But for the most part, you're right. Like a lot of those morals, they kind of, they kind of dwindled away, man. They dwindled away with with time. Let's talk a little bit about your, not your criminal history, but your, uh, your time in jail, man. I heard you were in the county at 16. 16, Fuck. bro. Uh, where do I start, man? Straight jungle, man. Uh, you know, I gave a fake name because uh, if not, I would have ended up going to YA. Um, and we got busted for a kidnap. My homies were like, just give him a fake name, man. So he go, go to the county. So I gave him a fake name. Um. And I go to the county, bro, for the first time, and right away, bro, it was on, man. Like, like. Uh, what, what year was this? Ninety four. Okay, ninety four. Nineteen ninety four. Um, ninety five hundred. Ninety five hundred, man, is, is when it was cracking in in a uh, nine thousand floor. My first riot, bro. How was, was that? Ninety five hundred. Oof. I ain't gonna front, man. It was it was for the first minute or so. I froze, bro. Like right. it just. Just it's, it's like like a war zone, man, and, right. and and it was it was vicious, man. You know, once once that little that little fear goes away, the adrenaline kicks in, and you know you start participating. I was a little kid, man. Yeah, I was still growing. Yeah, you were sixteen with, with grown yeah, ass men in there, yeah. and um, exactly. And back then, it was just can't even describe it, man. It was it was it was it was a whole different vibe, man, and energy, and and. Uh, the viciousness was was you can't even describe you it. You feel it in the air. Yeah, the feeling in the air. Um, and uh, some of it, I mean, I look back and I'm I'm glad I experienced it because it was it's part of my my, my journey, man, part right. of my testimony. But yeah, that that's uh you know back then you used to be able to uh, they call it roaming. We used to be able to go from the nine thousand to the three thousand to the you know what I mean you go all right, as long as you're back for count. <laughs> right. That's it, man. And and back then they had money. That's right. You had the money bags, the wet forties, you know. Ah, wet twenty You had, you had, you had the, uh, you know, drugs everywhere, bro. Every, you know, like in the two thousand floor, for instance, one sal, you know, the homies are slamming the next sal, 
they're smoking rock, you know what I mean? The next out, they're gambling. Next out, someone's getting beat up. The next out, you know what I mean? The Morenos are in there. Dice, you know what I mean? The next, and it was just... It was like a mirror of the streets, almost. Yeah, but it was like... It was, it was uh, how do you say it? Um, I'm trying to look for the right word. It's like one of those movies where you walk down and you see all these little cubby holes. Yeah, and, and it was like all just... Alley. It was all concentrated. just... Concentrated. Concentrated. That's the word. Concentrated in this this little box, Concrete man. Box, and, and, and the people outside, like, they have no clue. They, they picture jail like, oh, it's just, you know, bars, people... Are, Oh man, back then. And, yeah, J- jail was much different in, in the nineties, eighties, nineties, and until the two thousands. The just reason started. it was crazy, crazier, I guess, for me back then. That's when the green lights started coming. Right. You know what I mean? The, I remember MS had it. Uh, uh, the Maravillas. I was there when when they started getting it. The Chinese, the Chinos. Right. The Asians. Um. And and man, bro, it was it was vicious, man. It was a vicious time in there. Okay, so so now after you're 16, did you catch any any time for that case? I was fighting a kidnap. It was a bogus kidnap case, right? Um, actually, yeah, yeah, it was it was a kidnap case. Um, some dude that was giving us a ride. Uh, he wasn't from the hood. He grew up there. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think it was a a gun. You know, gun came flying out the window mysteriously, and uh. They had us hemmed up. They took us in, and they the the cops pretty much um, made this dude uh, fabricate this story that 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 we were kidnapping him. They scared him so that he doesn't have to go to jail. They try to say, "Well, because that was your car, that gun belongs to you. Right. These guys are gonna go free, and you're gonna go to jail." So he he went along with their story, oh, and he, he ended up saying that we kidnapped him. So we went and, and they ended up dropping the case and I got out about a month later, boom, right back in the county for robbery. That was when I went on my first term uh, and I went to prison December 5th, 1995 to wow. Delano. How old were you? I was 17. Oh, f- well, did they know you were 17 at the time? They didn't know. I gave them a fake name. Another fake Remember, name? Well, oh, this... it was the same fake name. Oh, okay. So you were running with so that name. So when I went to prison, actually from my whole prison time, Yeah. which was pretty extensive. I had a J number, J87430. Some of you guys, you know, don't like to give all your CDC numbers, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's a number you'll never forget. Yeah, that's a number you'll, I'll never forget. Uh, J87430, man. So, um, so how much time did you do on that robbery? From what year to what I year? I only got two years, bro. Two and a half. Okay, so, so you two were in there. Two and a half. Went to the, uh, I went to Delano. Um, me and my homeboy Largo, rest in peace, man. We caught the chain together. He was my, my co-defendant. Went to the same building, to the Lifer building, D5. Okay. I still remember my homeboy Smokey, Jason, was there. He actually landed with my homeboy Smokey in that cell. And I landed with the dude from Pacoima. Okay. Um, Largo, I believe his name was from Pacoima. Um, and then we got transferred to CR, to the building, to the uh, dorms. He went to a different building. And right before I caught the chain, I was going to go to this. Uh, I was actually, um, um, what do you call it? Uh endorsed to go to Susanville, I think, level one or something. Right. And we ended up, uh, some, the, the, the white, whites, they didn't want to deal with some dude, some paperwork came right. in. And they didn't want to deal with their stuff, so we were like, you guys got to deal with them. They didn't want to deal with it. We were like, all right, we'll deal with it, but then we're going to deal with you dudes, and we, we, we dealt with the issue, and we, right. we kicked it off with them. And uh, we went to the hole. That was the beginning of my journey, man. We in the hole, we, I was, I was, in tr- getting, you know what I mean. Everything, cell extractions, acting a fool. You know, in the in the in the little yard, right. you know, regulating people. My point shot up, ended up in the level four in uh, Calipat. Okay. And then uh, I was, you know, did my little time there, and that's when I was with uh, Speedy. Okay. From North Hollywood, boy, right? Man. And uh, I, I always remember him playing playing handball. With Young Speedy yeah, and uh, right. and uh, I believe it was uh, Lefty. Was it Lefty? Mom, yeah, yeah, Lefty. Lefty was, Lefty. yeah, Mom Lefty was there too. From North, from North Hollywood. Boys. Yeah, he's still out and about, but I mean, he's doing good now. Yeah. Now, you're in level four yard where Calipatria? Calipatria, yeah, CR. D- did you parole from there? I paroled from there, yeah. So, how much and, time uh, did you end up doing on your robbery? I only, I did like, I think, I don't know if I maxed out uh, 
almost close to maxing out. So someone, I only got two years. All right. So so then you, you did your two years. You're out now. So it's what like ninety seven, ninety eight. Seven, yeah. Okay. So take me through take me through these so years. I get out. You right. Know, I get out, and I was only out. I don't know. Probably till like July. Back to the hood. Back to the hood. You know now. You know what I mean. Fresh yep. out of prison. You know what I mean. I'm I'm like a hundred pounds, but I'm walking around like I'm two hundred. You know what I mean. Solid. You just came out the level four, huh, boy? Came out the four yard, you know. That's... I had a little, you know, working out, busting down, but I was small. Um, and uh, you know, you, you got that, you got that little, that little, that little uh, uh, edge, man. You know. You come with a different mentality, you also. Got different mentality. More of a shark. Yeah, and uh, you know, back back to the hood, you got a little bit more respect. I met a new little generation. Of course, of course. Um, and then. Uh, I get busted for another robbery. Is well, it was a grand theft person. Um, this one, I was with my homeboy, uh, three stay rest in peace. Right. Some dude was walking in in the neighborhood, looking like a gang member, and uh, we jumped off. Well, I didn't jump off. I was driving actually, and just jammed him up. And the dude, he was in from nowhere, but he was acting like acting smart. So the homies just, you know, jacked him for whatever he had. Right. And uh, we took off. We ended up getting cracked, pulled over, boom, and, and uh, we got busted for that. Um, I was actually gonna do. I was actually gonna get like nine years oh, okay. for that case, but they ended up offering us a, a sweet deal. What was the sweet deal? Two years. <laughs> <laughs> two years, bro. You know that. You know two years. Another sweet deal, huh? You know. You know All right. So so now we're 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 back uh, going to the joint now, right? This is like ninety eight or man. something. Yeah. So so now where are you going? I uh, went back, went back to Delano. Uh, this one, I, I, I hardly don't even uh, mention this one, but they they back then back then they were sending a lot of homies to a, a CMC. And that place is I don't know if you guys know, but that place it's considered a PC. Yeah, it's considered but back then there was like a, a yard, a quad where there were there was a lot of good homies. Um, and I ended up getting out of there, you know. And went to the hole and, and paroled from there. Okay, so... Then but you... I spent uh, most of my time in the county fighting the case. So that I spent most of my time. No, yeah, but that's, so, so, now, so now you're out on this one again, right? Out on this one. So you're just going on constantly in and yeah. out runs right now. Yeah, and then uh, that's when that's when I got out. That's when the the case, which I'm sure we'll get to. Right, yeah. Um, around that, that time. And then uh, I was on the run. I was on the run. They were looking for me, actually, for for uh, for this murder case. I was a suspect. They started raiding my house. They started. Uh, uh, they couldn't catch me, bro. They couldn't catch me. Okay. Um, they were mad, bro. The Temple City Sheriff. They used to tell my homies like, cause they they had a lot of close calls, and I always got away, bro. I was fast, and uh, and they never they could never catch me, bro. And I ended up getting busted. Uh, they raided my pad a bunch of times, and I was at my house. That's the way. And and I, I get up because it was a where you went, you know, yeah. I had a secret. It was a trailer. Yeah. Through under the trailer and I'll come out through the back and I had a secret getaway. So every time by the I, wash and all that. I got away by the wash, bro. <laughs> that was it. You know what I mean? That was my little trail. I even in my boxers one right, time. Right. In my boxers, bro. Boom. I was running in, down the street in the neighborhood. Right. And uh they finally got me. They right. They finally got me. I remember uh that movie Life with uh, Martin and then we yeah, went yeah. to go watch it. Me, my homeboy, uh, Downer, a few other homies. I remember we're smoking bud in there and, and we're watching it. You know, we're laughing. Everybody's like looking at us. We're in the back, you know, like, where are these dudes? And I, I'll never forget it, man. I went back home and I was eating. Boom, 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 boom. Open up, Tempest Shirt. This time I went, I, same thing, went through my trail. This time I jumped my little the fence and as soon as I jumped, Boom, freeze, and some dude just walks up, up, up to me, uh, and I remember he forearmed me, bro. Right. Boom. Laid me out. He didn't knock me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dropped you. Knocked me down, dropped me. And they just started stomping me out. You know the, yeah, you know the routine, back, bro. Yeah, of course. I mean, you, made, you made me fucking run for you and get you. Yeah, That's exactly. Because they used to tell my homies, when we catch him, he got something coming. And they ended up taking me. After that, after the, 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 the usual, you know, routine... They took me in the back of a cop car. They took me to Beaches, 
I sent you a, a, a pic right. right there. Beaches um, in the parking lot, bro. And they, you know that light that they have on the side to, to light the street yes. when they're passing by? Right. They turned it. I'm in the back seat. And the dude jumped off. And they left me there for like 15 minutes. They left the light on me so I can't see. What's going on? And they had came. Well, they came one time. And they opened the door. And they tried to question me. One of my homeboys had just got shot. He didn't die inside his house. Uh, and they try to question me about that. I'm like, I don't even know who you're talking about. What, you know what I mean? I didn't have no, I didn't have nothing for him. You know what right. I mean? And, uh, and they're like, what do you mean you don't know? You know, they started like, man, I don't know, man. Get away, you know. I ain't the one. <laughs> and they, they, they left, bro. But we were there. It was quiet, bro. And I'm, I could see them talking. I was thinking, I was actually thinking that, that they were, they were going to either set me up, they were going to, I was thinking they were going to kill me. Oh, they're going to kill you, yeah, brother. <laughs> they're going to kill me or they're going to, they're going to, they're going to set me up in a way Something's where someone's going to kill me. You know? Right. And I'll never forget it, bro. They, they, uh, uh, cause they were mad. They hated me, bro, because I was getting away and they were trying to pump me for information and stuff like that. Um, that they, they, they actually used. You know, you're done, man. You're going away from murder. They try to do that, whatever. Um, so I ended up getting busted. They never charged me officially. My parole charged me with the murder. Right. Because back then, they, they would charge you. Parole can charge you for, for something, even though you're not charged technically by the county. violation the right there and then. And, but I got a violation. I ended up doing a straight year uh, in the county. Went to Chino. Right. Uh, I was in a Sycamore. And then I went to Sentinela. Went to Sentinela, uh, B yard first, then I went to A yard, paroled from Sentinela. What year was this when you're paroled? This was, I paroled, I was there during the Y2K, so uh, I paroled a little bit after that. Okay. Uh, in 2000. Then I got out, and uh, next, I was out for like six months. I got, that's when I got busted for a strap, and I was at the Montebello Town Center. Okay. I remember we got into it with some dudes from Maravilla, uh, from Frazier. Right. Um. Got into it. The dudes had a. I remember the dude had a strap, and and I was telling my homies they didn't want to go outside. I was telling the dude, let's go outside, man. Let's go outside, you know, because I didn't want to get busted, you know. Yeah, of course. And and uh, the dudes they didn't want to go outside, so I didn't even tell my homies. I went out to my car, and I got my strap, and I came back in. And uh, long story short, man, the the security and everybody they started coming, coming like, hey, come here. And I was strapped, you know. I was like, nah. Once they started getting closer, I booked it and uh some dude came out of nowhere man need me boom um and i threw the strap and they, they couldn't find it but we're in the food court right there in the oh, middle fuck. everybody was brought you know in the daytime yeah yeah and uh, i get busted for that uh that's when i ended up doing uh i ended up doing i think i got like 32 32 months or right. something like that i i did my time in the three yard in Delano. Right. And then they moved us. That's when I was telling you. They moved us to an old Corcoran. They, they did like an emergency transfer. They started shipping dudes out. Right. I ended up in old Corcoran in the gym. And uh, it was a level four yard, but I was a three. And the gym, they put us in the gym. The rest was like, they had like the whole, like two buildings for the whole. They had uh, some buildings for the Bulldogs. That's when we were going at it with the Bulldogs. Right. And then one of the buildings was like HIV. It was all HIV people. Um, and then I proed from there. Proed from there. Uh, when I proed from there, that's when I, the first time I, I was ever out for a whole year. I stayed out for a whole year. This was 2002 to two, two, 2003. Okay. And, and then what happened? Uh, well, during that time is uh, when I really, it was, it was a pretty intense time, man. I, I went back to the hood and uh, went back to, to gang banging, bro. Went back to like really active. I was really, really actively you're out You're really there. involved in your neighborhood this time. Yeah. And um, it was a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, man. I, I actually started waking up to a lot of things, too. That's when I think uh, I started waking up spiritually, in a, in a sense, I guess I could say. Right. Um, but uh, I was still... You know, still in the hood and all that. Ended up getting busted. Uh, went on a high speed chase with my little uh, homies. Um, got busted for some straps. I got away, bro, on a high speed chase. Um, 
but they ended up finding us. We're in a, in the back. We're like in the back house. Right. And some lady, she they were looking for us, man, chopper and everything. And and this lady, she seen us through the window, and uh, boom, we got cracked. And then uh, that's when I spent. I got thirty two with eighty for that. Right. Uh, stayed in the county. Went to I believe uh, where was it? Centinella. Back to Centinella. Back to Centinella. Um, I was almost out. Picked up a case. Picked up a case uh, for a, a weapon. Right. Um, went to the hole. Uh, I was gonna get ten years for that case. Offered a sweet deal again. <laughs> another sweet deal. They offered huh? me another sweet deal. Guess how much? Two years, brother. Two years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and with half this time, I wasn't even eligible for half. Right. And then uh, from the hole, I got transferred. My point shot up. Went to. Uh, a level four, the 180 in Tehachapi. Okay. Went to Tehachapi, went to the whole, I mean, uh, yeah, I went to the whole from Tehachapi, got into some stuff there. Right. Got transferred um, to New Corcoran, SADF. That was the last prison I ever went to, man. Uh, on January 1st, 2008, they cracked the door open and they, they let me out, man. They let me out. Um, I was out for about a month, month and a half. That's when I paroled to my sisters in Rancho. Actually, I paroled, I paroled to my sisters, but they didn't want to let me go back to uh, parole there. They wanted me to go back to the neighborhood. And um, I had a fight. I had a 6-0 to it from, from the streets. They finally let me parole to my sisters. And I went to, to the Ontario um, parole office. And that's when I get a, a, the, the, my parole officer there. Uh, the gang unit there, they they start questioning me about this murder that happened in 1998. You know, they 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 actually try to scare me. They try to say that um, I had a a green light on my uh, on my life that you know I was I was I was pretty much done. They made up this this whole story, and I was like, man, I, I don't know what you guys are, are talking about. How long have you, how long have you been out this time now? When this happened? I had I was only out a month and a half. I had just did four years. Right. I did thirty two with eighty, and I did like about half. You caught that time on that on that two years, so I did four years almost exactly. Right. Four years in a month, so I was only I got out January first two thousand eight, and I got busted. The day I went to see my pro officer was Valentine's Day two thousand eight. So exactly almost a month and a half, um, and like I said, they they try to question me. They try to turn me against one of my homeboys. Right. Uh, my older homeboy. Uh, and this yeah. was a murder that happened. You're, this is 2008 where you're getting arrested, right? Mm-hmm. A murder that happened 10 years prior. 10 years prior. And, and you know what? After me and you talked, I looked at all the transcripts, man. <laughs> and I don't think nobody's ever really touched on it, man. It was a very high-profile case, man. Yeah. If you look at, if you look at the thing, it, it looks like... Uh, uh, correct me anywhere where I'm wrong. It looks like... Uh, you had a older homie of yours in the bay yeah. that was gonna get out, and mm-hmm. they didn't want to let this guy out. Nah, they didn't want him to get out, man. He, he, uh, I don't know how long he did up there. Right. But, uh, you know, I guess he was an individual that they were really interested in. And you know how they are. They, they, there's certain people that that they don't want out in society for whatever reasons. So they hit him. You know, they, they, the day on of his release. They filed this old cold case. This, this the ninety eight case. The ninety eight case. They filed charges on them. They, they, I think they picked them up in the bay, took them to San Quentin, and then they transferred them to the county. I didn't know none of this when I got paroled from Corcoran. I didn't even know they had filed charges on them. I didn't know there was this this dude, the main witness in my case, right? Which was actually a co defendant. Um, I didn't know he had. Uh, and he was one of your homies, right? Yeah, he was one of my, my okay. homies. I didn't know he had made, uh, he had already started working with, with the detectives. He was in Calipat, um, and he started, I guess, they approached him. He, they approached him to, to, I guess, turn right. on my older homeboy. And uh, But the crazy part, when he was in Calipat, he was in a GP. He was on GP, yeah. Right? He was on GP. And, uh, and how much time was he doing? He was doing... Life, bro. Well, he was—he was, he was he already was, initially he was busted for an attempt to murder that he got busted, I believe. Right. My homeboy menace. Right. And then, uh, um, during that time, they filed the 
the murder that I got busted for, they filed charges on him. The 98 murder. Yeah, like okay. somewhere around 2000, 2001. Okay. They pretty much had him like dead bang. They got him at the door knocking on the door. They just knew he was doing life so they could hold on to that case. Well, he case. wasn't doing life. He was doing about 10 years, I think, for an attempted murder, a okay. separate case. Okay, okay. But they filed charges on him around 2000. They brought him down from, from, from prison. Right. And they filed charges on him and uh, the murder charge. And he ended up taking a deal. 15 alive. For that murder charge. Yeah, but the thing is, he had already made a statement, bro, and back in 99 that nobody knew about. Okay. So I'm thinking, uh, it says, well, I found out that he took a deal because he didn't want that statement to come out. He knew that if they're, they're fighting, you know, he's fighting his case, he goes, he knew that that's, that's going to come out. Right. And he wanted to stay active. Right. In GP, and he didn't want that to get out, so, so, uh, um, he took a deal. He took a deal, and then, what, what year did he take his deal in? Like around two thousand one, I believe. Okay, so then let's fast forward. Then two thousand eight. How does your two thousand seven? They right. approach him in Calipat. He's in Calipat. The detectives they're trying to build a case against my older homeboy, right? And I think against me. I didn't know, right? Um, and against another homie that's doing life for the, for this case, and um, they they. They hooked them. They, they hooked them, and they then they, they implemented you. He they implemented impl me, he, um, another homie, and my older homeboy. And, and so uh, that's when I guess they, they built the case. Um, it wasn't enough, bro. It wasn't enough. Because fast forward, my, my, my older homie, he ended up going to trial on it. He got a, 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 a verdict of nine not guilty. Right. A hung jury and three guilty, so that's that's a that's that's a pretty to get a nine not guilty. That that's actually good, man. That they don't believe they didn't have enough, man. Um, and then uh, with me, they didn't have enough. But we will, I guess, we'll get. Yeah. Well, the, so so what it, what it seems to me was it was almost like they were just hooking you and hoping you'd, even though you don't know anything about it, just flip and say, yeah, he made me do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, they wanted, they wanted to, to use me the same way they used him. Right. Um, and there was actually another co-defendant that they never charged. He got immunity on the case, I believe. Uh, I think they charged him later, but then he got out on it. But, but he never implemented you in it. No. The only one was the other homie. Well, was the one, dude, yeah. And that's all they had. It was this guy's that's work. That's all they had. No weapon, no, no nothing. No weapon. Nothing. Man. Okay, so let's get to the case, man. You're 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 at the parole at the parole station. You're handcuffed. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go get booked. What's going on in your mind, man? Man, bro, you could imagine. Um, at that time, my mom was was sick too. I had to repromise, like that's it, mom. You know, I'm done. Were you tired of going to prison at this point? I was tired. I was. I had that mentality already, like I spoke to you before. Yeah. Like I'm already preparing my mind positively. Like, I don't even want to go back to the hood. Right. Um, I don't want to go back to the hood for nothing. The only reason I went back to the hood when I got out is because I had ran into one of my homies at Ontario Mills. Right. And he's, he tells me, uh, hey, did you hear, you know, what happened? Like, they're, they're, they're saying that, you know, all you guys are, are telling on the older homie and this and that. And I'm like, what? Like, so immediately, bro, I went straight to the hood because that, that was false, bro. I was, I was, that just, that wasn't me, man. And, and uh. I went and I just, I stayed in the hood, bro, because, because, um, you know, it's a pride issue. You don't want your name being smutted, smutted up like right. that and all that. But, um, uh, they end up, you know, arresting me for the murder. I didn't cooperate. They arrested me for the murder. And keep it real, bro, I'm in the back seat. They transferred me from there to Temple City Sheriff Station. And I'm just broken, bro. I'm, I'm in tears, man. Right. Like, just, like it was... It was like a ton of bricks, bro. Just boom. Just I was thinking more about my mom, and I think I shared this story with you. Uh, right. um, I've never shared it before, so this is exclusive stuff right here, man. Uh, I I was gonna commit uh, suicide, bro, in, in the in the holding tank. I know a lot of people see that as as a weak thing, but it actually takes courage for for someone to take their own life. I was already planning it out, bro. I was planning it out how I was gonna do it. I was gonna hang myself. And they cracked my door open, bro. They cracked my door open for a phone call that same day. And I go, I go. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go 
I'm going to go tell my mom bye, man. But the thing is, I didn't have her number. And this is how, this is where God really started working in my life, bro. Where I know that it's not just, oh, I want to change my life and give my life to God. He was actually actively pursuing me, bro. This was a miracle is that back then, you know, when these cell phones came into effect, you don't have nobody's number. You have their phone number recorded in your phone. I was only out a month and a half. I didn't have my mom's number, bro. But it was in me somehow, subconsciously. I just dialed a number, bro. And by God's grace, by a miracle, my mom answered, bro. She answered the phone. And I tell my mom, I'm crying, bro. And I tell her, I'm busted, mom. I'm in jail. Usually, the way my mom used to react, she's like, what? Like, negatively, this time she had a piece about her. And I told her, oh, it's something serious for a murder. She's like, don't worry, Neil. God's going to get you out. Those were her exact words. And it was like God was speaking to me through her, bro. And a peace came over me. And it was like God was speaking to me. It was like a, 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 a breath of fresh air. And, and I'll never forget it, bro. That's when, that's when um, the Lord really imprinted that upon my heart. That, that he's going to get me out, bro. And I, and I believed it. It was like a promise. And so from that moment forward, bro, I walked back into my... I was, I was crying and... and you know, I was I was encouraged, bro. I was encouraged. And I can't really explain it in words. I'm just trying to go through it. I walked back to my cell, and there's a Bible that was not there on the bunk when I walked out, bro. I'll, remember, I'm trying, I was going to commit suicide. Yeah. So I grabbed the Bible, and I just cracked it open. And the Lord was, the, I, don't, I don't remember what verse, but it was just, it was like, it was for me, bro. It, what I was reading, it was the Lord speaking to me, bro. It was, it, and I, I, like I said, I don't remember what it was, but it was something like a promise, like, and it was, it was specifically for me, like, I'm gonna get you out of this. And all those thoughts of suicide was gone, bro. From that day forward, I knew I was gonna get out. And we'll get into it. There was more miracles that happened during during well, this time. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to really rehash the whole case with you because I, I think a lot of people heard it, but. Dude, you shouldn't be out here, man. I mean, plain and simple, after reading the story, sticks, you shouldn't be out here. You should be in a level four prison right now, rotten. Yeah. Straight bro. up, because you got found guilty. Yeah. I shouldn't be out here. I should not be out here. Um, I should actually probably be dead, man. I don't know. But but as far as the case, I shouldn't be here, man. And, and by God's grace, bro, I, I am, man. I, I actually did get found guilty. I was pro per for three and a half years. I represented myself, um, and it was pretty tough, man. There's a lot of stuff that happened in between that I probably never shared in a lot of my, my old interviews. Like, right. you know, you probably don't want to get into all that, but, um, you know, in a, in a nutshell, I took it to trial. Um, they never offered me no deals. and uh, No deals, huh? No deals, no nothing. Um, the, for, the, the only deal was supposedly at the pro office. They offered me my freedom if I would work with them. Say this guy did it. Whoever yeah, they want. Just say wanted. he did it, and you're, wow. you're you're good. You know, you know, and yeah, that's course. never been me, even now, bro. That's like right. that's that's you know, um, but uh, I I took it to trial, and going by the law, they didn't have enough. An accomplice penal code eleven eleven, which is the penal code I was freed on, uh, says um, a conviction cannot be had. By the, by the testimony of an accomplice unless there be corroboration to that testimony, independent evidence. It doesn't have to be that strong, any Something. kind of evidence, but there was nothing. But I was convicted still, I believe, because I was a gang member. The jury's influenced by pictures. Just by you being a gang member, the, the jury's... Just also, you had a history. long criminal record history. Yeah, my long criminal record. All that came into play. But I actually look at it, um, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna say this is that God allowed that to happen because it makes it that much more powerful that I was convicted to demonstrate that he worked a miracle in my life. Because it's very rare that a conviction is overturned, especially that soon. Usually it's right 20, there. 30 years. Right. It, it wasn't even a year, bro, that this conviction was overturned. My judge, she said, 
she granted me a new trial. She said, uh, in 24 years on the bench, I've never granted a, tr a retrial motion, but I'm going to do it in this case. And she knew what it, she knew what it she meant. She knew it, and she did it, bro. That, that in and of itself was a miracle, and, and we were praying, bro. Uh, and, and behind the scenes, I have people praying for me, bro. I'm praying. I'm standing on God's word, on his promise he made to me back then in that, in that holding cell. Right. Um, and and uh, people on the tier, bro. Even in 1750, I'm on a tier full of killers, bro. Everybody's... And, and, and even then, I was open about my faith, bro. I still had my, my, my foot, you know, in, in, in the life. But I was open about my faith. I used to share the gospel with, with a lot of the, the homies. And, and a lot of homies actually came to be believers, bro. And, and, and they, uh, they would pray for me. I had people out here. I had my wife even on the internet having people pray for me. And all that, you know, was, was uh, uh, it, it, it came to play. I'm sharing it because it's not just an ordinary story. Oh, he, this guy just got released by, you know, by a technicality. It was a technicality, but... It was, it was God's grace upon my life for a reason, man. So I could come and share this with, with you guys, with, with, with people, bro, um, to demonstrate his power and his love for me, bro. And, and uh, that's, that's actually why I'm here, bro, is, is to share that. Yeah, if, 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 like, me personally, I'm not a, like, I, we spoke on the phone yeah. various times. I'm not a real religious person whatsoever, yeah. brother. But after I read your story, the transcripts, the whole case, I'm like, Dude, it blew my mind. I told my wife, damn, these guys are killing me. They're making me have more faith in faith every time I hear I hear stories like hey, that, and, brother. And that's and that and that's the that's the that that's where it's at, bro. Just to hear that, to me, that's that's a blessing, man. To to me, that's how God works, bro. Is he uses he uses real life situations, he uses impossible situations to fish, bro. It's fishing, man. It's it's fishing. There's different hooks, bro. When, when someone goes fishing, you, you go for different types of fishing. There's different type of bait that you use. There's different bait. You know, it can be music. It can be this. It can be YouTube. It can be different. And, and that's how God is, bro. He wants, he, he died for, for us, bro, people like us. When, he was, when Jesus was on this earth and he did walk this earth, bro, he was dealing with, with, with people like us. He got ordinary people and he transformed them to go. All the, all the apostles, all the disciples... All them dudes got killed, bro. They all got killed for their faith, which, which tells us it wasn't about this life. What's more important is eternity, eternal life. That's what he came to. How, how was it for you? Because I don't know if a lot of people know, you did five and a half years in the county fighting this five case? Five years, yeah. You did five years in the county. How was it with you and some of the homies? Did you ever get any like, pushback because I'm a Cristiano? Or, or no, nah, it... because I never pushed that. Label the Christian. I never, I never said. You never pushed the I'm Christian flag, up. right? I'm a Christian. What, what, what? It, what, what's unique about my story is that I was who I was. You know, I was, I was a sticks a, from Lomas. I, I was sticks from Lomas, bro. I was, I was with it, whatever. Um, but I was able to be open and honest and genuine on what God was doing in my heart. You know, it wasn't about, hey, this is what I'm... Because a lot of dudes, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, they reach a point and they use that to kind of... They don't want to be involved. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a turnoff to a lot of homies because we've seen it plenty of times. They turn Cristiano in the joint, the county. Yeah. They're out in the street two months yeah, later yeah. slamming dope yeah, yeah. or something. And so you're because like, of that, that's why um, I believe God kind of led me in, in that sense not to do that, but to still be a, a, a light, bro, to still be a light and to be genuine. And I think a lot of homies respected that. Even my older homie, bro. Yeah, of he, course, brother. You know, uh, um, and, and a lot of homies respect, respected that. And, and homies used to get at me, bro, on, on wheelas, like, whew. And we used to go back and forth on wheelas, bro. I'll be sharing with them. I'll be sharing books with them. I'll be, you know, a lot of, a lot of them, they wanted prayer. They had issues with their girls, with with. You know, their family, their kids. Just life in general, and we would, brother. Yeah, and we would, we, would, we would connect in that way, bro. And, and it was a blessing. Like I said, when I got out, bro, people in their scene, bro, um, that, that God is real. 
and, and they seen personally his hand upon my life. And that's not a coincidence. You know, that's that God planned it out that way, bro. He he said he set up all the pieces. And what he does in the hearts of others, that's between them and God. It's not about, oh hey, I'm 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 super hallelujah now. No, right. man. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. There comes a point in life where we all gotta face, we're all gonna leave this earth, man. We're all going to leave this earth. And there's a scripture that says, What shall it profit a man that he gain the whole world but lose his soul? And eternity is a long time to, to be wrong, man. And, and it's, not about, it's not about people think that, that it's about, Oh, you live a perfect life now. No, no, no. There's one man that lived the perfect life, bro. And he gave his life and shed his blood to wash our sins so that we can be righteous in, in God's eyes. When, when, when Jesus died for us, not only did he take our sins, he transferred his righteousness to, to, to the believers, those who placed their faith in him so that, so that we can stand righteous in the Father's eyes, bro. A lot of people don't know that. They think that it's, uh, uh, they got to change their life right away. They got to stop drinking. They got to do this. They got to do that. I don't got to stop drinking? Not, no, no. When, <laughs> no when, when you place your faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in you and he starts changing you. Right. But people think because they get turned off because they're like, Oh, I'm gonna have to stop this. No, no. Before you jump in the shower, you don't shower before you shower. You just jump in the shower, man. You let Christ come and wash you, and then He He starts working in your heart. Like me, I'm still shedding stuff, bro. That's right. There's still stuff that that God's taking out of me. Pride, anger. How, mu lust. how much of a, that weight, especially when you're in that life as deep as you were? How much of that weight do you feel got taken off of you when you finally like? <sighs> Because I can see it just by talking to you. You, yeah, you got a free spirit about you, brother. Yeah, bro. That, that's the gift. That's the gift of God, bro, is, is that not only this case, bro, not only this case, you know that a lot of, a lot of the, the things that, that we've lived, those things you carry, bro. Even if you, you may not be tripping it, but subconsciously within you, you hold those things, bro. Those are sins that get buried deep within you, and you got to carry that. When, when you surrender... All that to God, he removes it, bro. He says, your past is your past. You got a, you got a clean slate. You're mine now, man. I've forgiven you. That person, they may not have forgiven you. Your mom, your dad. But you're free, mijo. You're free, mijo. You're, you're, you're clean. That's right. And so that, that it's, it's a liberation, bro. You can be liberated mentally and all that. But spiritually, that's a whole other thing, bro. No. I understand the, the Christian aspect, the, the religion aspect, but there had to be something else, and it's not to take away from that. Yeah. I'm not, that's separate. But there had to be other things that made you want to change well, prior to that. What oh, was yeah. that? Well, like I mentioned earlier, before that, uh, family, mom, uh, you get tired. You get tired. You, you start realizing, man, you, you know, Nobody ever really told me this part of the game. You, you got to see it for yourself. You get tired of, of going to jail. You get tired of hurting your family. I didn't have no kids, thank God, at the time. But my mom, she was a, a... I put my mom through a lot of stuff, man. And I used to spend a lot of nights in prison, you know, uh, feeling that pain, bro. That heavy burden of what I put my mom through. And just not... Just, just you, 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 you get tired, man. You get tired... What would your message be to a child who's 12, 13 years old in your situation that wants to be in a gang and wants to live that oh, lifestyle? Man. Number, number one is, is uh, hopefully they can, they can learn from our mistakes. They can, uh, I would tell them the truth. Man. I would tell them the truth of what it really is. That it's not, uh, it's not fun and games. It's, it, they can... They can end up dead at, at any second, and I'll do my best to instill that in them and show them that that um th there's no there, there's nothing good that that comes out of it, man. You can still be cool. You can still be without having a, to be a a, a a gang member without having a, to do drugs. And I will share my life, man. I will share what I'm doing right now. I will share this video with them. I'll show them so they can see. The, the realness, the honesty, the reality of it. And uh, um, I'll encourage them, man. Uh, uh, one of the things that, I'm, um, that I want to get into as I'll talk to you is, is working with, with kids. 
um, is, is identifying their gifts, man. Everybody has a talent and a gift in, in this world. And we all, there's a purpose for each and every one of our lives. But a lot of times those things, they're not brought out from these kids. They're not brought out. Um, if I had that when I was a youngster, um, the talents and the gifts that I have, who knows what would have happened. So my, one of my goals is, is to start working with kids like juvenile halls, camps, starting maybe my own little uh, nonprofit or whatever, and working with kids to develop their gifts um, and, to, and to find the resources to be able to get them to where they need to be. Man. Guide them in the right direction. Guide them in the right direction and be a part of, actually be there and people like us start, you know what I mean? Like right, maybe brother. in the future, like we talk, yeah, of course, you never know, man, where, where this is going to lead. We can start our own thing and, and help help our young people. It's, like, it's not like we're some square people and just saying, do they will the relate good. to nah, us, man. I mean, They're going to nah. respect we, we were in, they know we've been through. We're it, in the man. trenches, brother. All of us here. We were in the exactly. trenches. And, but we all know, which is crazy, is all the guys who've been in it are like 40 years old and up and really been in they all, you, all, you talk to them, they all say the same thing. Yeah. It ain't worth it. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want this for your kid. You want this for your cousins. Yeah. Guys who ain't been about that life will try to sit there, hey, yeah, I was like yeah. this, you know, you and it's not. Dude. And it's going to resonate within them. Yeah. It's going to, like they say, real recognize real. They know, man. And they're going to, and some of them youngsters, man, you'd be surprised, man. That's all they really want, man. They, they, need, they need to be recognized. Let's say in the next 20 years, there's no more Lomas gang. And it's not because your enemies have taken you out, it's not because of cops, it's just because the community has moved on and, and moved forward, would you feel, how would you feel about that? Well, I gotta tell you, from my perspective, based on how I'm living now, Yeah. Um, I actually can see the good, the good in it, the gentrification, because, hey, there's no more destruction, there's less destruction, man. there's right. less homies getting killed, right. yeah, of course, I, I, I always have that, Little pride for you know for my I love my neighborhood man. Of course, I love brother. my old boys. Um, you know I love the 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 I love the hood man the the, the neighborhood as far as uh, uh, geographically, but I, I I got a heart for the hood man for the Lomas neighborhood and for all hood actually right for your hood of for course, brother. any hood man um but uh, I can see the good in it bro um, I know we always look at the negative aspect because we're like oh man. We ain't even got no more hood and all that, but we can find the positive. Hey, man, maybe that is sa is gonna save someone's lives in the future. Some of these kids' lives, man. Now they don't have to hang out of course. in the corner, man. Maybe that'll help them to, uh, you know, find their purpose, man. And and, uh, uh, and and so I always try to find the the, the positive. Of course, yeah, there's there's. There's always gonna be that, like you know. It's it's bittersweet, like we talk with these guys. It's bittersweet, yeah, yeah, brother. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Bittersweet, but hey. I think we all got that same but attitude, yeah, right? Yeah, but, but as far as geographically, that's ge geographically speaking, but the the homies, we're, yeah. we're always going to be there. Of course. So we can be, I got a homie that lives in TJ, you know, and the homies go over there and the hood's... We where you're at, the hood's where you're at. Where you're at we're, we're, it's kind of like, like uh, 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 you know, um, um, once again, like speaking about my faith, people think the church is the place where you go. No, biblically... The church is the people. We're a living organism. It's the body of Christ. And we're, we're, wherever you go, that's where the church is at. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with the hood. Could, wherever the hood, wherever you go, the hood's there. Do you have um, a YouTube channel? Is I have a YouTube, YouTube channel, Righteous by Faith. Uh, you know, it's barely started. It's a small channel, but it's, it's already had a good response, man. It's a blessing to me to hear people that are blessed by the content or any anything any I never make a a, a, a video unless the, the Lord puts it in my heart to do it. I'm not gonna just be, you know And what kind of content uh, are you pushing on that? But channel? I, I have a little bit of, of everything like my interviews that I that I have. Right. Um uh, I just recently did a, a, a video on on creation on proof outside of the Bible, uh evidence, j common sense evidence that there's a God. Uh, like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, the earth, the way everything operates, the order in the universe, right. the human body, DNA, like, I go into all that. I have, uh, you know, videos of, like, for instance, like, when uh, Nipsey hit, Hustle got killed. Right. Um, as soon as it happened, like, the Lord 
but he put it in my heart because they were kind of, it were, they, people were being misled, bro. You know, when someone dies, um, they don't, they, they, they say, oh, you know, it, it, in a sense, it kind of, it gets portrayed a certain way and like, if if I if the Lord puts it in my heart, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna speak on it because that's an opportunity to actually show people, like, look it, man. This ain't this ain't no game, man. Like like like, you know what I mean? Or 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 this dude portrayed a certain lifestyle, but look it, man. He could have been making money, but what good is that? Right. Could you, know? you could you imagine if we could go back as now that we're men, go back to our hoods? when everybody was younger and kind of instilled what we know, if they could put the glasses on yeah. of our lives and instead of banging on each other, instead of slanging dope, instead of doing drugs, if we as neighborhoods, whether it's yours, mine, Sonny's, or Boo Boo's, told the homies, hey dude, get a handle. Look, start being a teacher, start being a doctor, start being a instructor, start being an engineer. We would actually have a piece of the pie in our neighborhood, man. So like how we're talking about the neighborhoods getting gentrified, but the, the sad part is that too much of our homies are not part of that gentrification because we've been we boot ourselves out, man. Yeah, yeah. If if we can go back, man, if we can go back with what we know, man, like you said, we we we'd have our communities. Um, we'd be more involved, man. We'd be more. Uh, uh, ha we'd be able to to raise our kids, man, our youngsters, in a in a in a different way, where where we'd actually be owners and, right. and and doing all this um instead of as opposed to other people that just want to push you out and make money um but yeah man uh, in hindsight when you look at stuff as much you know ma when you're mature uh it's it's there, there's a lot of things that you like man i, I could have did this but hey we can start somewhere that's right well, brother you know, from from my perspective and and the way um I see things, and I noticed a trend with a lot of guys um, that are at the point that they want to stay out of trouble, mm -hmm. but they're halfway in the game still, yeah, and oh, halfway out. There. Like Limpsy Nussle, Limps, Nipsey Limpsy Hustle, Limpsy. whatever his name is. Limpsy? I don't, <laughs> Limpsy. I don't know him, I don't listen yeah, to him. Yeah. But Rap fan. Yeah. it seems like he had one foot in and one foot out. That's that's why. And I, that seems to be like a main thing with a lot of people. That's what I meant. Of, that's that. That's what I meant. Um, I, I guess I didn't communicate it correctly, but that's exactly what I was trying to get at. Is um, you have these guys that are doing something, quote unquote, positive, but they're still portraying this image, and it can confuse people. It can confuse people, and actually, um, where you you. You gotta, you gotta. If you're gonna be for 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 the good, be for the good, man. If you're gonna be like, don't be. Uh, there's a term in the Bible, lukewarm, man. You're either cold or you're hot. So if you're gonna go full force, hey, if you're gonna be for the bad, stick to that. If you're gonna push that, push that. But if you're gonna be for the good, do that and don't confuse people, because you're dealing with kids. You're dealing with with young minds that are still maturing, man. And, and you can confuse people. Like, for instance, quick example, I was heavily influenced by, by hip-hop, like most of us were, by Tupac. Tupac used to push, he planted a lot of seeds in my, in, my, in, in my life, man. I actually came to learn about a lot of stuff through that guy's music, man. I was a Tupac fanatic. I used to study that dude's lyrics religiously, bro. And, but he influenced me in a, in a positive way. But... He also influenced me. I used to use his music when I used to go gangbang. I used to actually, there's something that just comes over you, you know, like, pumps some you of up. you guys, you guys know, like, pumps it pumps you up, you up oh, but yeah, it's sure. something even more, like, it's like, like, in a spiritual way, negatively, where you just, like, something <laughs> just comes over you, and you, you're ready to do some damage, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and to me, that's like, and, and I was part of that. I'm a product of that where, I wanted to do good. I wanted to. I felt God tugging at my heart. But then when this other little piece of me took over, I was full force with it, man. But what do you say? What do you say to people? Because I get this a lot of my comments. 
fool. Like, don't be talking about this stuff. People already know about that life. They know what they're getting themselves into. And I'm like, because they don't know, man. A lot of those guys, you got to understand, a lot of those guys are either ignorant or they're young. They're young in their mind. Or they could even be older, but they're still young in their mind. And they don't care. They've never been in the, in the positions we've been in. They've never seen what we've seen. They don't know our pain. They never walked those steps. So, therefore, they have no... They really have no right to even say that. And, and take it a step further, they're actually uh, tools be used. But I believe, just like I believe in God... I believe in Satan and, and the enemy, and he has he has his demons all over, where he they he actually uses people to influence them in a negative way, you know, to plant his seeds, and and those people are just driven by negative energy, by by negativity. Well, I hear people talk about pumping people up for negative. Yeah, especially you know, especially in YouTube, mm -hmm. you hear them pumping them up. No for names. Failure. <laughs> I'm say no names. But when. For somebody who's been in that situation, that's been there, I was on those yards, I've been I still on the yard. If I were to go back, I'd still yeah. be there. But they, they use them and they pump them up for failure. And just by me listening and talking to them, knowing that they've never been there. Yeah, you, They've you never been on those yards. They've never lived that life. Yeah. Because if they did, they would understand that the game is so twisted. It's hard to say. Yeah, you can see that they do it for money, for, for fame, for views, for clicks, for whatever. But yeah, you're right, man. You can see right through some of that. It's magic. almost like the Norteños and Sorenos. I could tell a Norteño yeah, just you know by the way. Yeah, yeah. Just, he, he looks like us, dresses like us, but he's not us. There's something yeah. a little bit off. Like me and you, me, you know, each and every one of us, we, can, we, we know we can identify that it factor that tells us, okay, this person's putting too much on here, or he's doing this, or he's just faking the funk, man. He's lying. Like my, like Gil, the reason I did the interview with him was because I felt like it was heartfelt. Can you tell me why you did it with him? Oh, or what uh, the reasons? I, it threw me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, American Cholo. American Cholo. I call him Cholo. Yeah, that's Cholo. right. But yeah, um, well, help? like, like I, I spoke to him on the phone, um, and I knew, I knew we were gonna, we were gonna. As soon as I, I seen him, I don't know, I don't even know how I stumbled upon. Oh, I seen your, your, uh, your street gangs interview, which I did a street okay. gang with uh, Alex. All right. Immediately, bro. Immediately. I felt the genuineness. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not into flattery. I don't like flattering people or stroking egos. But I felt the, the, the realness, man, and, and, uh, and I, I appreciate that, bro, because I try to be as honest. And real that I can, cause that's what's gonna actually, that's what's gonna have an impact on people, bro. Is is when you can be real, they can see through that, they can they can feel it. So when I seen a uh, a uh, uh, a brother right here talking, I was like, man, that's someone that I would like to uh, 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 get together with. And then his message, some of the things he was saying, is I told him, that's me. You know what I mean? That 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 that's me. That's my that that's. That's something that I've always wanted to do. He spoke about um, about wanting to 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 connect with dudes from other hoods and get together and kind of start something like like a movement type of thing. That's actually what we're doing right now. That's right. We might do some stuff in the future. No, we definitely will, but, brother. But uh, uh, yeah, man. That because that... you don't, you really don't know Gil from just. Like kicking him when you bet. <laughs> I've met him and I've, I've been kicking Barely him. Barely met him while. today, but, but, <laughs> but when we start talking, we. He's I, a good person. Was, he's not. Um, it was like we knew each no other. No bad intentions. Yeah, no, it, it was. I think we both appreciate each other, like I said, for the genuineness. And we've lived that life, man. We got the right to speak about what we speak about. We don't got to put on a front for nobody. And, uh, and I think that's the difference between us, what we're trying to do, and what other people are trying to do. Just just for fame, for money, for clicks, for whatever. There's nothing wrong with, with making money for what you do. But when you do it just for that, your whole your the, the whole motivation, your, your standpoint from what you're doing it is wrong. You know, but uh, on a deeper level, the way I see it, they're going to have to answer up for that, bro. One day or another. They're going to have to answer up for a thing that they do and say. That's why I take it very serious when I come on these platforms. Um, I don't take it lightly, man. 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't take it lightly because I know that uh, the 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 impact it can have on someone, bro. And I don't try to portray. We talked about a lot of stuff about my neighborhood. That's part of my story, man. But uh, 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 ultimately, I'm here to plant some seeds, to water some seeds, and to to lead people in the right direction. You know what I mean? Especially kids, man. Older people too, but especially youngsters, man. And to me, that's where my heart's at. That's why God raised me up. That's why God kept me alive and preserved me. That's why he let me out, you know, after such a, a, a critical case. Um, you know, that's my purpose, you know. And, and so, and I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to answer up for what the talents and the gifts that he, given, that he gave me. I don't want to go off into the Bible like I've been doing, but there's, there's a lot of uh, scriptures where it talks about that, man. What, what did you do with what I gave you? You know, did you use it? What did you use it for? Did you go bury it? There's this story of this dude. He went and buried what he, what God gave him. No, man. We, 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 we each have a purpose. We got to use what we got, you know, where we're at, man. It's not about, oh, I can No, man, use what you got, man. This right here, this is powerful, man. This is powerful. This camera, no, I agree. this platform, this is very powerful, man. And, and um, I'm truly grateful and I'm blessed. Um, that I'm doing this, the Lord actually put it in my, in my heart years ago, bro, to do it, to do what I do too on, on my channel, but I procrastinated, bro, because of fear of what they might think with this, because a lot of people, they get offended, they don't, you know, or, or you, like me, I, I, I start talking about the things of God, and, and just like I talk about the good things, I gotta talk about the bad, hey, we're all sinners, man, you're gonna have to answer up for that sin, you're gonna answer up, Covered by the blood of Jesus, or you're gonna have to answer up by your own self, and 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 there's there's consequences, and some people they don't like to hear that, bro, because because it doesn't rub them. Right. The truth hurts, brother. Yeah, the truth hurts, but there's good news, man. Gospel means good news. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that you don't have to answer up for the sins of your life, man. You know, and that's my message. But I, I was supposed to be doing this a long time ago, but because of fear, so for. Some of you guys out there, some of you youngsters, if you feel led to do something like that, to do something, do it, man. Don't pro procrastinate. Don't worry about what people think. Do what you do, man. Do what you've been called to do. And and don't worry, because there's always going to be people that don't like you. There's always going to be people that disagree with you. There's always going to be uh, people that actually uh, hate you, man. But, but don't worry about that, man. You do what God has put you here to do, man, and that's it. All right, so Sticks, um, you know, give me some final words and uh, let people know where they can find you. Uh, talk to me. So, you guys can, uh, you know, you can find my channel, uh, Righteous by Faith, on YouTube. Uh, my Instagram, uh, ifhrosa78. But, uh, maybe, yeah, Righteous by Faith, that's my YouTube channel. And just so you guys know, um, I got different content, a lot of different stuff coming out. Um. My, one of my main goals is, is, uh, I started, I don't just believe by, by faith in the things I believe in. I actually studied a lot of this stuff out, um, cause I don't just believe stuff just, just blindly. But I, I had to be sure that what I believe in is real. And so I started, I started studying, um, like, for instance, how the Bible was compiled, how it, how it came together. People actually died just to keep the Bible alive. So I'm going to be putting stuff out there to kind of show these 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 types of things. Um, uh, prophecy, a lot of things that are going on now were actually prophesied hundreds, even thousands of years before. And there's no other book that exists that says these things. And so God put it in my heart to, to, uh, to kind of teach these things because most people, a lot of people, they're not going to go to church. They're no, they'll never step foot in church. They'll never, but through these kind of platforms, um, they can they can come and, and learn, and it can it can help build their their belief in something and actually, uh, uh, you know, find the truth, man. And, and like I said, that that's how uh, I, I I question a lot of things, man. I used to believe a lot of different things. There's so many religions. People say, well. Every way, you can get to heaven this way or that way. And that's not true, man. That's a deception of, of the devil, bro, uh, and, and women. So that's, that's, uh, that's basically my, my, uh, my, my main objective is, is, uh, is to do that. And, and that's, 
that's what that's the essence of my of my channel of righteous by faith that you could be righteous by placing your faith in Christ not by the things you do that's the good news that's the gospel I appreciate you guys man for uh, man, for everything you, man I, I really appreciate you guys man for uh, for everything man <laughs> Hey, started off by encourage growth. I'm just trying to give a little hope. You should never boast, but if it ever bow boast, how we came and he said you in the uttermost, said you in the gutter most. Everybody like my, my, my. Walk around the circle, watching time fly by. Can you mess till I die, die, die? You ain't trying to speak the truth and you a lie, lie, lie. Want the approval of man or the approval of God? Trying to disprove who I am, that only shows who you are. You been seeking this hand and I've been seeking this faith. And why you seeking this hand? You don't believe in my faith. Uh. Yo, should've been flogged in the synagogue. But you show forgiveness to the synagogue. That's why I thank you for forgiveness, God. Every day begins with God, the only true and living God. This is the moment that we all been waiting for. Let's pick up our crosses and let's go change the world. This is the only solution. Yeah. So let's start this revolution. Yeah. Pick them up. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is God's plan. You ain't God, man. I got soldiers with me and we all in. I ain't perfect, no, but that Holy Ghost will lead the old man straight comatose. I'm on my when I rise up. Heaven's home when my time's up. A sacrifice when he tells me. Look, I'm just trying to be lined up. Got plenty of people that believe in me. Had to follow God. He changed the scenery. Deliver me from that greenery. I ain't even know what he seen in me, but I'm suited up and I'm booted up, plenty flaws and that's true enough, deny my flesh and that's stupid tough, used to keep a burner, that ruga tough, this is God's army, see God on me, I got God in me, I do not envy, I love plenty, don't play games about my Lord, it's not pretty, got Brian with me, got 5-2, my spirit man about 9-2, I hit the hood with that Bible on me, just let me know where I can find you, yeah, yeah. the people watching and waiting to call us hypocrites, ready to that second credit, we gotta finish it, look at the lashes they get fitted on my back Persecution we go through when they come to the Christian rap uh, Hold you accountable is only cause I love you Try to lift them up and then they turn around and crush you Long as you got God with you, the enemy can't touch you Even though we love to try to shut you up and hush you All top the cup of God's can overflow Hitting the devil with uppercuts and low blows All top the devil talks and no no Overdose this holy ghost will win soul Choose a side, cause straddling the fence You are making a little bad when you act like you had no sense eh? And move aside, let me deal with you and tearing down Magnify Christ, crucified on solid ground this is the moment that we all been waiting for Let's pick up our crosses and let's go change the world This is the only solution So let's start this revolution Pick them up, let's go, 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 let's go. Yeah. Uh. I done picked up my cross and done counted the cost. I don't care what these people say. To the day I'm laying in my grave, I'ma get these folded flames just like my name was Marcus Gray. A better yet a witness in the book of Revelation. This is dedication, this one consecration, elevation of a generation through communication of the greatest story ever told without a hesitation. Talking global domination, taking Christ to every nation. Demonstration of a revolutionary, a visionary. To the day they bury me in the cemetery, I'm something like a walking seminary. Only thing on my itinerary is adding souls to the fold. Kingdom building is a goal. Holy Spirit take control. Bold to the day we walking on the streets of gold. We encourage growth. Better act. Like you know, let's go, boy. This is the moment that we all been waiting for. Let's pick up our crosses and let's go change the world. This is the only solution. So let's start this revolution. Pick them up, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Oh.